Good evening everyone. I am Ashley and this is Tevin and we are the Junior School Captains for 2021. At St Margaret's Barrett Grammar we acknowledge the Bunurong and Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nations as the traditional custodians of this land on which we meet today. We pay our respects to the Elders past, present and emerging for they hold the memories, the traditions, the culture and the hopes of Indigenous Australia. Thank you for joining this special event. We hope you enjoyed this virtual presentation as we reflect on and celebrate our 2021 year in junior school. Welcome to the junior school presentation night. This is a night when we proudly reflect on the year 2021. We acknowledge not only individual achievements, but the students of years four, five and six. Like 2020, our presentation night 2021 is virtual and some of the awards have been altered too to reflect the very unusual kind of year that we have had. For example, sports colours cannot be awarded to Year 6 students as they are based on a year of inter-school sport achievement and participation. However, we will award a sport award later this evening. We devote this evening to acknowledging and celebrating our students. We approach the 2021 academic year with great anticipation, hopeful that the disruption of 2020 was behind us. Terms one and two ran smoothly, with one lockdown lasting five days and another for 14. We were able to go ahead with our camping program for years five to Flinders and year six to our nation's capital, Canberra. We were able to fit in so much in the first semester, district swimming, inter-school sport for years five and six, house cross country, girls and mixed netball challenge, the Cedar soccer clinics, gym incursions, our junior school music soiree, our prep and year one concert, our year five and six billy cart challenge days, and six students spoke to an astronaut on the International Space Station. What an amazing event and opportunity that was. And who could forget the involvement of all year five and six students in the whole school musical, Matilda Junior. Most of term three and the first few weeks of term four saw learning take on a fully online format with lockdown resuming. Various events were held online, including parent-teacher interviews, information evenings and assemblies. Many students participated in online challenges and learning experiences during distance learning. Extra offerings for many students included the use of breakout rooms via Microsoft Teams, which is the opportunity to collaborate, socialise and work together in small groups, just like the students do in the classroom. We celebrated book week with competitions. We participated in the whole school decathlon challenge. We had Father's Day tributes. We celebrated the Tokyo Olympics. We created online Kahoot and quizzes. We had online guest speakers. We participated in the science talent search and national history challenges. We participated in the ISV poetry competition. We had dress up days, cosmic yoga, resilience project lessons for all. We had competitions, online science experiments, and even teachers and some senior students recorded themselves reading a picture storybook for the little ones. We had cooking challenges, footy dress up day, and more. It was not until week five of term four when all the children returned to full-time on-site learning, having spent most of term three at home learning remotely. We ensured that some planned activities could occur in Term 4, like Year 3 and 4 Camp Jungai, swimming lessons, the Year 2 Strings concert, house swimming, athletics carnival, a Year 5 day run by Proactivity due to their Sovereign Hill Camp not going ahead, the Year 6 PYPX and Year 6 Celebration Day. The core and co-curricular programs and opportunities we offer cannot be underestimated. 
A recent example was the Year 3 and 4 camp to Rubicon. This camp was the perfect tonic for our children who had just returned to face-to-face -face learning after weeks in lockdown. The opportunity to experience the serenity and beauty of the high country, to be away from their parents overnight, try canoeing, go bushwalking, try the possum pool and practice their independence and self-management skills was so encouraging to see. It was definitely a highlight of Term 4 for me and a great example of what our students must participate in for their personal, social and emotional development. In spite of being in lockdown for most of the second half of the year, we've had some significant achievements to celebrate. Each child made the most of their distance learning opportunities. Every child continued to learn and make academic progress. It gave them an opportunity to reflect on what they liked, disliked, how they prefer to learn in general, and further understand the environment and conditions which help them thrive and flourish. Our NAPLAN results for Year 3 and 5 students in 2021 were nothing short of formidable, with students making significant progress on an individual level from Years 3 to 5. Well done to those students and to all of the teachers who have been a part of their educational journey so far. The Science Talent Search is an annual science competition open to Victoria's primary and secondary students. This year, five students from the junior school took part in the challenge. Not only did the students have to plan and create their entry, but due to COVID, they also had to video their presentation for judging. Five junior school students received a distinction award and Leo from year four received a bursary award. We congratulate these students for demonstrating an inquiring outlook regarding science, a commitment to completing a task and for showing independence with their learning. Six students entered the National History Challenge on the theme of significance, history matters. Five of those students received a bronze certificate and one student a green certificate. We were very thrilled to recently hear that Scott from Year 6 received a silver award as a runner-up in the Primary 2 category, Australia-wide. He had one of the top three entries in Victoria. Kate from Year 4 won the gold award in the Australian Women's History category, so she was a Victorian winner and she received a silver award Australia-wide. Kate won a monetary award as well as a medallion. This is the fifth year in a row that St Margaret's Berry Grammar Junior School students have won at state level. Congratulations to all. We have had students enter their poetry into various competitions throughout the year. Mia, Alia, Kate, Laura and Sheridan all received acknowledgements and awards for their efforts in competitions and in getting their work published. I thank our school captain team of Ashley Stibbard and Tevin Sembukuchiarachi and vice captains Maisie Thurmond and Nicholas Cowdery. They have set a high standard for the students through their presence and leadership, even during lockdown. They each demonstrated incredible strength of character and positivity as role models to the younger students. To the Year 6 students, I thank you for your contributions to the school and wish you well as you take the next step in your schooling and make the most of a secondary education. I hope you take the time to think about the year you have had. It has been different. Everything that happens to us, good or bad, gives us an opportunity to learn and understand ourselves more. I have two phrases I would like you to think about and ponder. What if and if only. What if are two words that, when used, make us stop and think about possible choices we make, words we use, actions we ponder or copy. 
I hope these two words stay with you and guide you as you continue into your teenage years. If only are two words that encourage us to use hindsight. If only I did this, said that, thought that, encouraged that. If only. Channel your thinking, actions, thoughts and deeds into what if. And this can ensure that your secondary school years are positive and an opportune time for you to learn, experiment, take calculated risks and appropriately challenge yourself. I will miss you all and will always fondly remember this very special cohort of Year 6 St Margaret Berwick Grammar graduates. Finally, I wish to thank the St Margaret's Berwick Grammar Junior School children. You show curiosity, warmth, kindness, empathy and care to others. To the staff, I thank you for your unfailing service, endless energy, zest and professionalism in every way. We especially bid a fond farewell to Mrs Jo Cook and thank her for over 30 years of service in the teaching of art in the junior school. All the best for your retirement. To the parent community, thank you for your positivity, respectful suggestions, patience, thoughtfulness and support of our wonderful junior school during 2021. Thank you. It is my absolute privilege to announce the year four, five and six awards for presentation night 2021. The Queen Margaret Award reflects our school's namesake and is presented to a boy and a girl in the year level. The recipient upholds the values and traditions of the school, as well as achieving their personal best across a range of areas. The award also recognises a student's commitment to the school, their leadership skills and their service to others, the school or the community. The 2021 Queen Margaret Awards for Year 4 go to Kate Dougal and Leo Thurmond. The Queen Margaret Awards for Year 5 go to Kirill Attia and Lara Gadelj. The Year 6 Queen Margaret Awards are presented this year to Sabella Jukic and Araman Sharama. The Silver Unicorn is awarded to a girl and a boy from each year level. Recipients of this award are recognised for their curiosity, integrity, character and courage. They demonstrate a willingness to contribute to all aspects of school life, encouraging and supporting others and demonstrating strong citizenship. The two students in Year 4 to receive a Silver Unicorn are Patrick O'Connell and Thistley Dodenwala. The Year 5 students to receive this year's Silver Unicorn awards are Jackson Utan and Angela Chu. And the Year 6 recipients of the 2021 Silver Unicorn are Max Doyle Cox and Jennifer Song. Hello everyone. I'd like to start by acknowledging that I'm speaking to you from Wurundjeri land and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to acknowledge the President of Council, Mrs Fiona Templer, Council members, the senior and school executive, families, staff and students of junior school. One of the most wonderful things about the last two years is that we've had to do things differently. So many parents are now saying to us how the last few years have prepared our children to manage challenge, to survive and often thrive. That's all very well, but as Ogden Nash said, progress might have been all right once, but it's gone on too long. I know some are tired, some are energised, and I suspect all of us are looking forward to a break. We are blessed in schools to have opportunities to invest deeply in others, especially our young. I've heard it takes 15 dedicated minutes of an adult's time 
for that child to believe the adult cares about them. As we finish our 95th year as a school, I reflect on the occasions from this year alone that exemplify this happening. The teacher who every day chooses to meet, when they can, a young lad at the officer campus and the playground to play board games with him, to ensure he is engaged and not lonely. The photo I posted recently of a senior girl sitting with two English teachers on the lawns at the Berwick campus, just chatting, encouraging her and getting to know each other. And this girl has gone on to become one of our highest achievers. After 95 years of outstanding practice, what I love about this place is the continued emphasis on the message that we, the educators, are what they, the students, need us to be. We were the first school to introduce trousers for girls over 25 years ago. The second school to introduce laptops in Australia back in the 1990s. I love the fact that we're not afraid to say, I don't think this is working, let's try something else. As we approach our 100 years with a new strategic plan and master plan under development, I'll know we will continue to say, how is it that we can be the ones that stand behind and beside those children so that they can fly? How is it that we can support those young people to exceed their expectations? As families and educators, we can all reflect on, honour and respect the capacity we have to make a difference to a young life. I'd now like to draw to your attention some of the people that have, I believe, made that difference. And we're saying goodbye to a few people who have supported, cared for and challenged colleagues and students. Meredith Croden will take a year's leave next year and we look forward to her return in 2023. Congratulations to Jody Norling, who's accepted a teaching position at John Pucha Janka Piran Catholic School in Western Australia. This is a small, remote Aboriginal school with 19 students from kindergarten to year 10, situated in the Great Sandy Desert. Jody's been with us for 18 years. Her professionalism, dedication, and commitment to teaching young children and making a difference to their early years of schooling has been evident throughout our time, her time with us. Although we will miss Jody, she moves to her new teaching role and adventures. We wish her all the best for the new challenges and interesting times she has ahead. Secondly, after 32 years at St Margaret's Barrett Grammar, Miss Jo Cook has decided to retire at the end of this year. Jo has a long and distinguished career at some of Melbourne's top schools and has contributed to the creativity and talent development of literally thousands of children. She's a respected and deeply loved member of the St Margaret's Berwick Grammar staff and Jo, we wish you all the best in your future endeavours. Each of these people have, I know, influenced others with their care, compassion and knowledge and we wish you all well as you pursue the next stages in your careers, and we thank you for your passion. I'd like to also mention from the Diversity Department, Mrs Glenda Clark, who's retiring after influencing so many young people across the whole school. Go well, Glenda, we will miss you. I'd like to thank all staff across the whole school, and in particular the junior school, for your service and contributions. At the senior levels, the placing of both the boys' and the girls' schools in the top 10 of single-sex schools, and the girls' school indeed in the top 10 of all schools in the state, is testament to the quality and nature of the education the children receive. The junior school NAPLAN results this year were also literally off the scale. And I know all listening will send a virtual round of applause to all the teachers. I thank you all teachers and ESS for your incredible commitment and energy. In 2021, the school was recognised as an employer of choice at the National Educator Awards. And I believe this reflects the support, investment and importance we do place on our, our staff. But it's certainly not just academic results that define us. We genuinely want to impart courage, curiosity, character and respect. It's fair to say that a number of our teachers have taken up further learning. Our senior leaders like to model learning. 
Dr Stephen Middleton and Miss Meg Fortington are completing a collaborative qualification from the Schools of Business and Education at Harvard University. Rebecca Fernandez and Deb Francis are well through their Masters. Other staff, including those in junior school, have been selected for highly competitive postgraduate qualifications and PhD studies. And I look forward to sharing that news with you early next year. And this is on top of the many teachers that have already completed a master's or higher. Our international mindedness agenda continues to shape what we do and we were honoured to be asked to contribute to the Australian Curriculum Studies Association, Independent Schools Queensland and the International Baccalaureate, national and international conferences with a number of publications resulting. Our Indigenous garden is well underway, unfortunately delayed by COVID and Murrindindi continues to be a part of the day-to-day -day undertakings of our school. And in the next few months, we shall see a huge three metre high bunjil or eagle sculpture to be erected at the Berwick campus to protect and guide us. There is no doubt that the capacity of our young people to look beyond Berwick is outstanding. The increased action resulting from concerns regarding racism, climate change and youth mental health is reflected in new activities that include our Interact Club, our Academic Club, and a range of service learning initiatives. The energy of these young people continues to amaze me. Enrolments are growing. In fact, a number of year levels we've had to close off because they are full. And 2022 will see significant growth across all sections of the school. We are a unique community that knows itself, knows what it stands for, and is constantly thirsty to improve. As a school, we will continue to engage, excite and motivate our young people with the curiosity to know and learn through exercising courage to do the right thing, character to be one's best self and respect to live wisely and compassionately with others and the planet. We are very excited about working on the next strategic plan and master plan that will bring 22nd century learning spaces and programs to our community. We continue to undertake regular safety surveys which capture not only concerns with things like bullying and racism, but also give the children a voice and a chance to reflect on the structures and programs at the school, as well as general child safe considerations linked to the child safe standards. As I speak to you, the school is in the middle of a VRQA review that ensures the school is performing at the highest level. Finally, I will take this opportunity to make specific mention of some people. The senior executive, Dr. Stephen Middleton, Ms. Louise Sayer, Ms. Meg Fortington, the director of engagement, Mr. Nigel Halsey, the director of business operations, Mr. Mark Jackie, the director of risk and compliance, Ms. Nolene Mazza. I thank you all for your support, creativity, problem solving capacity, flexibility, collaboration. Indeed, all those things we're trying to impart to the students. And my goodness, did we need them this year. To Mrs Sayer, the head of junior school in particular, I thank you for your academic and organisational leadership that is heralding great outcomes for our school. I also take this opportunity to thank junior school leaders, including the wonderful director of the ELC, Mrs Sue Eden, and the highly capable deputy, Ms Melissa Graham. I also acknowledge our ESS, our educational support staff who maintain systems, buildings and grounds that are, I believe, some of the best around. To our council members, and this is a voluntary position, I acknowledge not only the time and energy you give, but the incredible importance of your wise and informed governance. I particularly acknowledge the outstanding contribution of the President of Council, Mrs Fiona Templar, to the functioning of the school this year. It has been a tough time for so many, but Fiona was always there with a smile, advice, and an openness for which the community should be incredibly thankful, especially in such a year as this. To our students, You've continued to be resilient, inventive, clever and kind. The leaders at all level of the school, the Year 6 captains in particular, have had to rise to the challenge of leading remotely and you have done it spectacularly well. Finally, to the parents and families. I commend you for the support and care you have shown each other 
and the school. I believe everyone has reached out to demonstrate curiosity and respect, and in particular, in these years, courage and character. One thing COVID has taught us is that given sufficient technological capacity and support, our children will not fall behind academically. We must, however, as adults, absolutely have the children's back, continue to believe in them, laugh with them and cry with them to support them emotionally. So that when they wobble in life, as surely they will, we will be there to steady them. And as always, I finish with our vision statement. Virtute et labore, strive to be our best selves for the betterment of all humanity and the planet. Thank you. I am now delighted to announce a number of our special awards specifically for students in years five and six. The Junior School Academic Award is kindly sponsored by Peak Real Estate. The Academic Award is presented to a student in Year 5 and one in Year 6 who throughout the course of the year has demonstrated an outstanding level of academic achievement. The St Margaret's Year 5 Academic Award for 2021 goes to Carissa Tan. The Year 6 recipient of the 2021 Academic Award is Laura Liu. The Music Award is presented to a Year 6 student who has been an active and committed member of the school music program. The student exhibits an immense depth of talent and has a strong desire to achieve excellence. The Junior School Music Award recipient for 2021 is Alia Ismail. The Art Award, kindly sponsored by Zart Art, is awarded to one student in Year 5 or 6. The recipient of this prize has demonstrated commitment to developing artistic and technical skills in their folio work in more than one medium and utilising the opportunities afforded to them by the Junior Art Program. This year's Art Prize is awarded to Maisie Thurmond. The Parents and Friends Service Award is presented to a student whose actions have had a positive impact on our society and the environment. By these actions, they empower others to ensure a positive future. The recipients for 2021 are Eilish Craig and Susan Kawari. The Sally Boyd Hudson Award was established by the Hudson family in memory of their daughter Sally, who attended St Margaret's School many years ago. It is traditionally awarded to a student in Year 5 who shows promise across the creative arts, both visual and performing. Congratulations to the Sally Boyd Hudson winner for 2021, Tia Segal. The Junior Sport Award is usually presented to one boy and one girl in Year 6 who strive for and achieve personal best in sport, together with a high standard of performance in more than one sport. However, due to the nature of this year and the cancellation of many sporting events and activities, we modified the selection and application process to reflect achievements in both 2020 and 2021. As a result, we are pleased to present the 2021 Junior Sport Award to several students who have demonstrated consistent achievement and dedication to sport. Through their exceptional sportsmanship team and teamwork, the awardees have been reliable and cooperative competitors with a strong commitment to the Junior School Sport Program. The students receiving a sport award for this year are Ashley Stibbard, Tevin Zimbukutiarachi, and Jada Tiberi, as well as Maggie Flanders 
and Ella Duho. Our final award for tonight is the Cochrane Family Award. Mrs Mary Jo Cochrane has had a long connection with St Margaret's Berwick Grammar. As a parent of children who attended junior and senior school, as President of School Council and now in her role as Head of Philanthropy. The Cochrane Family Award has been kindly established to recognise a junior school student who displays courage and perseverance. Someone who has demonstrated determination to achieve their best in all aspects of school life and is committed to service and involvement in school and or the community. The recipient of the Cochrane Family Award for 2021 is Matilda Perry. That concludes our special Junior School Awards presentation. Congratulations once again to all the recipients for 2021. You should feel very proud. Well done. Good evening St Margaret's Berwick Grammar School community. Welcome to our second online speech night. This is in stark contrast to the early roots of our school when Miss Dora Gibson established a small primary school securing the use of a Presbyterian church hall and manse for the purpose of establishing a home school for girls under 12 in the Turak district. The course of instruction included scripture, kindergarten, English grammar and literature, history, geography, arithmetic, nature studies, needlework, drawing, deportment, French, music and class singing. The fees were set at £40 per annum. From our humble beginnings, St Margaret's Berry Grammar today stretches over three well-appointed campuses and caters for both boys and girls from pre-prep to year 12, offering a wide range of subjects and extracurricular activities. Our school embraces its heritage whilst keeping a watchful eye on our present and future. This year, our school celebrated its 95th birthday and while some of the functions and events had to be cancelled, we certainly have had much to celebrate. Academically, we are one of the top schools in the state, with 12% of our senior girls last year achieving an ATAR over 99, placing them in the top 1% of the nation and almost a third of our senior boys achieving an ATAR over 90, placing them in the top 10% of the nation. The results from the recent NAPLAN testing across the relevant year levels were exceptional. As we approach our centenary, the School Council has secured the contracts of our key leaders, Mrs Annette Rome and Dr Stephen Middleton. A new strategic plan is being undertaken and we invite the community's engagement as we believe it is through this consultation process that we will develop an even better school for the future. The school launched its new visual identity this year, One Unicorn, One School, and you will see the new branding throughout the school. The ethos of One School is stronger than ever before. We have engaged the services of top architects to assist us in developing a new school building and grounds master plan which will take us through to the next decade. Although this is in its embryonic stages, there is talk of a new arts complex, a STEM centre and a sports precinct. An extensive amount of work has been done in the financial structuring of the school. We have refinanced our bank loans and strengthened our financial position during the year. We have reviewed a significant number of school policies and have a better understanding of our risks. To this end, I would like to thank our Director of Business, Mr Mark Janke and his team, and fellow Council Members, Mr Pino Stravalli, Mr Sam Pritchard and Mr Graham Bulti for their commitment to this endeavour. A Property and Facilities Manager was appointed and you'll most likely see ongoing changes being made around the school. Some of the more recent items which have been addressed are the upgrade of the LED lights at both the Officer and Berry campus, the planting of the garden around the staff car park at the officer campus and the installation of air purification units throughout the school. Thanks must go to Mr Patrick Brennan for his strong leadership in this area and fellow Building and Grounds Council and subcommittee members Mrs Amy Ridgway, Mr Dominic Elfink and Mr Jason Perry. 
Mr Evan Gorky retired from the committee this year and I would like to acknowledge his immense contribution to the school. This year, Professor Alex Newman was appointed to council. He brings with him extensive knowledge in the local and international education sectors, which completes our board. Whilst it has been a slow process recruiting a full contingent of council members, I am convinced that we have the right mix of knowledge and skills to oversee the future of our school. I would also like to thank Ms Shemaine Nathaniels and Ms Julia Utah for their continued contribution to Council. It truly is an exciting time in the history of the school. As I move into my third term as President of School Council, I can see the progress we are making and I would like to extend my thanks to all council members who give so freely of their time, resources and knowledge. In particular, Council Deputy Presidents Mr Pino Stravalli and Mr Patrick Brennan for their support, guidance and wisdom and for the time and effort you have given to your roles as Chair of Finance and Risk Management and Building and Grounds respectively. During the duration of this pandemic, I have been profoundly touched by the resilience and commitment shown by our close-knit St Margaret's Berwick Grammar community. We know that education does not change the world. Education changes people and people change the world. And our staff in particular have gone above and beyond under these extenuating circumstances. Our teaching team is made up of dedicated and compassionate professionals who have not shied away from stressful situations. As the landscape has continuously changed, they have remained agile. Despite every change and new hurdle, everyone has remained positive and developed creative solutions. They've rolled up their sleeves and exceeded expectation, continuing to place our school at the forefront of the educational space. On behalf of School Council, I would like to thank you all. Once again, it has been my privilege to work alongside our school leader, Ms Annette Rome, whose foresight in navigating our school through this pandemic has been inspirational. Not only has she managed to almost complete her PhD on developing international mindfulness, at all times she has remained a consummate professional. The hours have been long, the climate challenging, the boundaries constantly changing, and not once did she waver from the task at hand. Council would like to extend their thanks and gratitude to her and Deputy Principal Dr Stephen Middleton and the school senior executive team for their leadership insight and the professional manner they adopt in their everyday approach. I would like to acknowledge the contribution they are making to shaping the future of our school. As we once again bid farewell to our Year 12s, our COVID cohort, who have managed to complete their senior education in the midst of a pandemic, I hope that over the course of your journey, you have been inspired and encouraged to accomplish extraordinary things. You have walked alongside your peers, your parents and staff, all of whom believe in you. Now is the time for you to have faith and belief in yourselves. As you leave our school gates to embark on the next part of life's journey, be empowered and embrace all the challenges and opportunities that will undoubtedly come your way. Most of all, be proud of what you have achieved and who you have become. Hold dear our core values of courage curiosity, character and respect. Above all, remember you are exceptional young men and women who have graduated from St Margaret's Berry Grammar. One of the strengths of our wonderful school is its community and it is the strength of our community that has enabled us to rise to the challenges of the past few years. I would like to acknowledge and thank the parents for your continued support of our leaders, our teachers and of our wonderful school in such trying times, for entrusting your children to us. As we slowly move out of lockdown into a world of artificial intelligence, globalisation and the digitalisation of the new world, one thing remains constant. Things that are important today will remain so. Being a good person will always be important and these are the values that underpin our core strategy. We are a robust organisation and we will continue to grow and explore innovative ways for our children to learn in a global environment. 
Our shared experience has strengthened our resolve and we are excited for our future. Thank you. Good evening all. In preparing for this evening's speech, I spoke with a number of students from years four, five and six to find out about their experiences this year. I was told about how 2021 has been both challenging yet also successful. My discussions reminded me of the quote that if something doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. You'll see how in spite of the challenges that have been faced this year, once again, so much has been achieved. It's a privilege to be able to share the highlights of 2021. When I asked the Year 4 students to describe this year to me with one word, the words chosen were magical, interesting, funny, different, fantastic and amazing. Such a diverse list of adjectives inspired me to ask more questions to investigate. What I discovered reflected the many experiences the Year 4 students have had this year. One event that came through strongly from my discussions was the Anzac Day Assembly. Students commented on how hard they worked in order to prepare for the event. They prepared their speeches and delivered them with confidence to the audience. One of the students reflected that he felt more confident because he knew most of the people in the audience. It was wonderful to hear how supported he felt presenting in front of our school community. Another highlight that many Year 4s reflected on was how they've enjoyed the different units of inquiry they've studied this year. I heard about the impact of becoming more knowledgeable about Aboriginal culture. I was told that it was really interesting to learn about the real custodians of Australia. We learned about their history, their life and some of their traditions. Students enthusiastically described their learning about the water cycle. It was a highlight because it was really interesting and we got to do science experiments. In the unit where we are in place and time, one student was inspired by his learning about Ed Stafford. He walked through the Amazon River from one end to the other, nearly six and a half thousand kilometres. A lot of people doubted him and this student connected on a personal level with a sense of doubt and adversity that Ed Stafford faced setting out on such an enormous walk. The Year 4s were also all feeling very grateful that they were able to attend Camp Jungai. This camp was very nearly derailed by lockdowns, but they were so lucky to get away just a few short weeks ago. The students told me how it almost felt like a holiday. They got to sleep in cabins and do different activities. Canoeing was a favourite because many had never done it before. It was described as challenging, but it was definitely a good challenge. The Year 5 students described 2021 using words such as friendly, different, fun, amazing, interesting, awesome, eventful and thrilling. They saw themselves as lucky that they got away to camp at the beginning of the year. Some students had never attended a school camp before and one told me that all the activities were really fun. Many reflected that going on camp at the beginning of the year was great because it helped them make new friends. Five students connected strongly with their different units of inquiry that they studied this year. Some units came through really strongly in my conversations. How we organise ourselves because we learned about supply and demand. One student commented that it helped him to have conversations with his parents about their jobs and how supply and demand connects with what they do for a living. Sharing the planet was another highlight for many because the students loved having choice about how they present their work. The way they showed their research and knowledge was very unique. Year 5's most recent unit, How the World Works, was a final learning highlight for many of the students. I was told that it's quite interesting to find out about the many layers of the earth and all of the content that we've learned. It was described as intriguing because it's really interesting to try and understand how scientists figured it all out. Year 6 was described as challenging, eventful, peculiar and phenomenal. These words made sense when I was told about their trip to Canberra. This was another trip that was very nearly derailed by COVID, however, they still managed to get away and have a fantastic experience. The students told me of their visits to sites such as the Australian Institute of Sport, the Canberra Planning Museum, Old and New Parliament House and the Electoral Museum. Many had never been to Canberra before and they told me that they loved the travel and most of the learning that occurred. Leadership has still been a focus for the Year 6 students in their positions at the head of the school. Although they haven't undertaken their roles in the same way as they usually would have in a face-to-face -face environment, they've made appearances at virtual assemblies and have encouraged and challenged all of the students to remain connected. 
I was told by one student that she wanted to be a role model, lead the way for others, and also wanted her parents to feel proud of her. Pleasingly, she also feels like she's succeeded in all of these things. I hope that's a feeling that all of our captains share, despite the challenges they've faced. I know that all student leaders celebrated the fact that they were able to resume their roles in a face-to-face -face environment when we returned to school in Term 4. The Year 5 and 6 students this year shared in their enjoyment of the Billy Cart Challenge. This was a new cross-campus initiative that saw students head to our senior boys campus to build billy carts, which should have been raced in Term 4. Sadly, this was another event that was delayed by COVID, however we look forward to it continuing next year. Students commented to me that they loved working in a team. They also had to reflect on their own personal strengths and use them to best help their team. In closing, I'd like to remind the years four, five and six students that if something doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. It's fair to say that 2021 has been a challenge, but it's up to each of you to decide how you allow it to change you. Keep up your positive attitude and allow your experiences to change you for good. Thank you. Music Colours are awarded to students who have demonstrated significant achievement and contribution to music at St Margaret's Berwick Grammar. Students need to attain a certain number of points to achieve Music Colours. The points can be earned in a variety of ways, including assembly performances, examinations and involvement in ensembles such as Junior Concert Band and Allegro Strings. It gives me great pleasure to award the following students. Sanuki Adikaram, Sally Arnott, Eliza Brennan, Lorenzo Chen, Sabella Jukig, Scott Dougal, Odelia Fernandez, Maggie Flanders, Alia Ismail, Kleena Kamalamathan, Monique Lapierre, Laura Lu, Jennifer Song, Toyesh Termalorati, Anya Van Wyk. Congratulations to these students. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce my wonderful graduating class, 6JC. Sally Arnott. Ryan Bazina. Lorenzo Chen. Sibella Jukic. Ella Duho. Maggie Flanders. Justin Gu, Kayla Ingemels, 
Alia Ismail. Cleaner, Kemela Natham. Monique Lapierre. Holly Padula. Haley Pereira. Catherine Wrong. Adeshvir Sandu. Austin Schiltz. Araman Sharma. Vani Solanki. Maisie Thurmond. Jada Tiberi. Toyesh Tirumalaredi. Congratulations to all of the students in 6JC. Make the most of the adventures as you move into secondary schooling. It brings me great pleasure to introduce the fantastic students of 6DL. Sanuki Adhikaram. Lucas Algy. Eliza Brennan. Tegan Bromley. Lincoln Clamp. Nicholas Cowdery. Michaela Delards. Scott Dougal. Max Doyle Cox. Odelia Fernandez. Charlie Hart. Laura Liu. Stephanie Mandel. Grace Morera. Matilda Perry. Kevin Simbukatiarachi. Rehan Shazad. Jennifer Song. Ashley Stibbard. Anya Van Vake. Mavindi Vithanaga. Lily Wersterling. Congratulations to all the graduating students of 6DL. I wish you all the best in your exciting secondary journey. Good evening, everyone. Ashley and I are delighted to have been your junior school captains this year. Together with our two vice captains, Maisie and Nicholas, we would like to share with you some highlights, special events, experiences, and memories from year six in 2021. This year has been somewhat of a crazy year, bouncing in and out of at school learning to distance learning. In fact, we only just recently realised that we have not had one complete or whole term at school this year. But despite this, we look back on lots of great and memorable experiences and opportunities. Like most students around Australia, COVID-19 has meant that our final year of primary school has been unique, challenging and character building, but still lots of fun. A big highlight for all of us was of course our Canberra camp. We were really disappointed when we heard that it had been postponed at the start of the year when it was supposed to happen. But we were very excited and grateful when Miss Graham told us that she had managed to get it rescheduled in May. In hindsight, how lucky we were to go at all, with only a very short interstate travel window available because we went into lockdown almost as soon as we got back from Canberra. The Canberra camp was five jam-packed days in our nation's capital. We went to Parliament House as well as the old Parliament House, which is now called the Museum of Australian Democracy. I thought Parliament House was amazing. The most interesting thing for me was learning about the process of how laws are made and then how they are passed by both houses. Questacon was amazing and my favourite place in Canberra. It was considered one of the world's leading science centres. I found the interactive displays, fun science activities and experiments we did the most interesting. Although many of us were disappointed that we couldn't use the drop slide due to COVID-19 regulations. We also visited the Telstra Town, which was incredible and super high. There were amazing views of Canberra at night where you could see Parliament House as well as many other places. The Australian War Memorial was probably one of the most important and special places that we visited. 
We heard stories and information about individual soldiers, as well as looking at all the artifacts and pictures and stories about the war. We also looked to see if anyone in our family was up on the honour wall. Geoscience Australia was another awesome place we visited. This was the first time any Year 6 SMBG students had got to go here, and it was great. When we had the earthquake in Melbourne a month or so ago, we all know it would have registered on the National Seismograph Network at Geoscience, where we had been. We def definitely recommend this being part of the Canberra Camp itinerary every year. Many people just think it is a fun camp, and it is fun, but it's also a great learning experience. My main highlight was the bike ride and going to the Australian Institute of Sport. It was also so much fun having the opportunity to go on a plane with all my school friends. It is very different travelling as a big group compared to when you just go on a holiday with your family. It takes a really long time to check in 50 suitcases and have 50 people being checked through security. Camp is also fantastic because it helps build new friendships and we also got to know our teachers really well because you have lots of opportunities to sit and chat with them like on the plane, in the bus and at mealtimes. Without a doubt, a big part of this final year in junior school was the many, many weeks we spent away from school doing distance learning or remote learning. It was definitely unpredictable at times and challenging too, but our teachers were so amazing and kept us on track and motivated. I know we were all able to achieve goals and work as best as we could because of the support we had. Distance learning is a very different way of learning that everyone had to adjust to, not only students but teachers and parents too. Some of us loved parts of it and some of us didn't enjoy it at all. I know we all really missed being at school with our friends and teachers on a daily basis. Another lucky timing for us this year was our excursion to the big issue. This was right at the start of Term 3 and again, we were lucky to go at all as we went into lockdown the very next day. The big issue gave us a great insight for our Sharing the Planet Year of Inquiry. It is a company that encourages homeless people to have a job and earn their own money by selling magazines. The sellers get to keep half of the money. It is a great way for them to support themselves, build confidence and feel valued. I know my peers and I all loved being able to speak to people who were or are homeless. It was a chance to talk to them and understand their stories. By far, a true highlight to end our junior school journey is our PYP exhibition. Again, this was a new and different experience this year, as most of it was done remotely rather than in the classroom. But we think you would all agree that we pulled off something innovative, creative and unique. With our shared central idea, through technological advances and scientific understandings, we can make the world a better place. We were able to follow our interests and passions while demonstrating our skills as inquirers and communicators. It was a great experience to work collaboratively and do research with other students who shared the same interests and passions. On behalf of Year 6, we thank all of the teachers and mentors involved in this journey, who made it a truly positive experience and a fitting way to conclude our junior school year. Good luck to all the Year 5s for next year. Year 6 will really make you think and teach you a lot. So even though it flies by, make the most of it. It is so much fun. We captains are positive that you will make a great impact on our junior school, whether you are in a leadership position or not. You are all leaders. Thank you to our amazing Year 6 teachers, Mrs Cardolo and Mr Lay. We are so grateful for everything you've done for us and especially your fantastic support, encouragement, kindness and humour during distance learning, which meant so much. This was very hard on you and your families too, and we thank you. We all agree that through your wonderful guidance in Year 6, we have all come a long way in preparation for senior school. Thank you to all our wonderful specialist teachers who provide us with a wide variety of programs and curriculum experiences to enjoy. We also want to thank our parents for their love and support, even more so this year. It has been very hard for them as well. And finally, thank you everyone for watching tonight. It means a lot to all the Year 6 students. We feel very fortunate and grateful that we go to St Margaret's Barrett Grammar. Thank you.